Hello everybody, welcome to our Cake Foo Master Series. Uh, today we are really excited. We've got a, a wonderful pastry chef with us. Um, it's, it's not a, a normal occurrence for us to have a pastry chef on. So um, usually we, you know, we've got cake decorators and they're very talented, extremely talented. Uh, but today we're going in the, in the way of sugar work. And so we have Chef Charity Pikels George with us. And I'm really excited to, to have you here with us, Charity. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Awesome. Okay. Um, for for those of you that uh, don't know much about charity, we're going to help you guys figure it all out. So, <laughs> so here is uh, about all about charity. So, charity, you started out as um, a child. You did baking with your with your family and and learned how to do some some things that way. Started out uh, selling cakes. Um, oh, something's going on with my. Sorry, my screen's not changing. But you know what? Let's just go ahead and talk about you, and I'll see if I can work that out. <laughs> you are <laughs> actually selling cakes by the time you were eighteen. You want to talk about, you know, how that all came about? Sure. Um, if anybody's familiar with Kathleen Lange, the um, I call her the queen of all things Lambeth. Um, it's kind of funny that she went the way of um, really old school methods. I'm even like dating back to Marie Antoinette. <laughs> uh -huh. And I've done more newer stuff. But um, she and I both worked not at the same time. Like you and I were discussing before we started here, I've even discovered that ostrich eggs are allergen free compared to chicken eggs. So yeah. who knew? <laughs> I had to mute myself. Okay, very cool, very cool. Well, you are naming off this whole list of things that your kids are allergic to, and that just, I, you know, having a pastry background, you know, a culinary background, I'm sure that has such a huge, it has been such a huge help to you in your career. So, Absolutely. and in your family life, that's just. Absolutely. There we go. <laughs> cool, there's the slide. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Charity, if you click on that slide, sure. it, will, it will be the main screen for you, and it will be easier for you to see what's there. Perfect. Sorry about that, guys. We just had my computer froze on me, so luckily I have three of them here, <laughs> so, so I was able to stay with you. <laughs> Apparently, my technological issues this week are contagious, because now I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm infecting you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it happens to everybody. So, <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, also, you have done some TV stuff. You want to talk about your competitions and appearances that you've sure. Been able to do? Um, that'd be awesome. I have competed in two episodes of the Ultimate Cake Off. It was the first episode of season two and the final episode of season two. Um, both were wedding cakes, uh, where, where all of my friends got to compete in all these fun, crazy um, other kinds of events, I got stuck with the wedding cakes. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I did too. The fun stuff. <laughs> Nothing against weddings, I love them, even if, though I'm divorced, but um, they, uh, you know, wedding cakes, I can do them, you know, like anybody else, but I really love the fun, crazy cakes, and so it was kind of ironic that I had to do two wedding cakes. Anyway, um, <laughs> later on, I got to do Halloween Wars, which was way up my alley, and um, Cake Wars, which was actually supposed to be the um, the premiere episode of what's now Sugar Dome, mm -hmm. but then they uh, changed the format so much, apparently, that they just aired what they filmed with us as a special called Cake Wars. So. Oh, I see. I wondered about that, because I saw yeah. the Cake Wars, and then I saw the Sugar Dome, and I was like... Well, you know, are they going to have two similar. different shows now? <laughs> yeah, right? I know it's similar, but I guess they felt like they changed it enough that they didn't want to air it as the premiere, so that's okay. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Well, you know, that's that's amazing that you've had such huge opportunities in, in, that, in that area, and that's, you know, I've congratulations. I've been incredibly blessed. Um, I honestly, a lot of... My background in the entertainment industry already, knowing how all this stuff works, um, 
knowing all the lingo, uh, you know, just having been on enough sets and then also having been in radio, uh, when they go to do my interviews, um, they're super fast. I know, I know what they're looking for. I know what they want. And so to be quite honest, production companies like working with me because I'm not a newbie to their field. And so, um, word kind of spread fast because it's a small community. Everybody talks, everybody works with everybody else. So it, I've been very, very blessed and fortunate. Um, cause I've also, done fabulous cakes where they came out to the bakery that I was working at at the time before I started my own and filmed there. And then um, once I was on my own, the Nisi Nash Wedding Bash people called and asked me to do a cake for that show. So Awesome. That's yeah, it's been pretty cool. Very cool. Sorry if you guys see me drink some water along the way. I've got a tickle in my throat. I hope I don't start coughing on all of you guys. So. All right. Um, oh, and we need to talk about icing smiles. My I know favorite. last week, last week we had Anne Heap on, and she is uh, on the board of directors for Icing Smiles. And as luck would have it, <laughs> Terry is also. <laughs> Yay! So we're we're kind of making a theme out of the whole deal. <laughs> so tell tell us about Icing Smiles and and uh, how you work with them and and anything special you might want to add. Well, I, let's see, it was at the ISIS in North Carolina, um, and Ruth Rickey, if you are familiar with her, um, she has uh, the same exact leukemia that my daughter has, so she and I are BFFs, and um, she introduced me to the gals that started Icing Smiles, and they got about two sentences into their pitch, and I just stopped them. I said, stop, hold up, I'm in. No more, you don't need to say anything more, I'm in. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> no convincing needed. <laughs> yeah, no convincing needed. So they, um, I guess it was like two months later, they actually invited me to be on the board of directors. I am their one medical mom, also as a pastry chef and cake artist. Um, Elisa Strauss and Ann Heap are also cake artists on the board, and there's a few others. But um, it's been so amazing to give back in the medical community, which I understand and get, and uh, be able to interact with these families that, although their kids have different situations, different illnesses than my kid, we can talk and we can, um, you know, they can tell me their story and they know I get it, which has been really, um, a really a special experience for me and for them, which has been really fun. And I'm able to give back through my um, skills and talents because my kids get thousand dollar birthday cakes by default because I'm not paying somebody else to do that. <laughs> I'm just doing it myself. And so my kids get spectacular birthday cakes. And, but not everybody gets that. And with all the cake shows on and Ace of Cakes and Cake Blast and stuff, you know, these kids sit there in the, in the hospitals and stuff and they love watching the Food Network and TLC and all these other shows. And to be able to get a cake that they, that's similar to like they see on TV, that's this really fantastic cake, it boosts their spirits so much. It's just spectacular. It really, I mean, it's nothing short of spectacular. It really does. It's you know, really awesome. I we are so lucky to have the icing smiles, and I, I hope that everybody, everybody, whether you're, whether you have an actual cake business or you're just a hobbyist, um, there are uh, different states that are allowed to have hobbyists, you know, do do cakes. Absolutely. So check check with them. Just apply to be, you know, an icing smiles angel is what they call you, a sugar angel. And um, just go and apply and, and yep. find out if you can. Um, go to icingsmiles.org and um, sign up as a, um, as a baker or if you know of a medical family um, that could benefit from a cake, you can direct them to the website and they can go on and apply to get a cake. So, mm -hmm. or if you want to just donate, you know, we're happy to. It's true. It's amazing being on the board. I'm getting the back end of how much these things cost to run a nonprofit organization. You have to pay fees in every state that you that you function in, and I mean, there's so many there's so many government fees and and so many costs involved in just trying to do good for others. It's 
it's been mind blowing. Yeah. Really, I, I'm getting quite a, an education being on the board and all of this stuff. And it takes a lot of money to do this. So even if you can't contribute, maybe otherwise, feel free to go on and donate. Um, to the cause so that we can continue to get bigger and bigger. We're only um, a three-year-old organization. We did our 2,000th cake a couple months ago. There was a tweet about that a couple months ago. But you can also follow them on Twitter and Facebook. It's Icing Smiles. And, um, yeah, do whatever Perfect. you can. Yes, absolutely. We love Icing Smiles here. So, great. Well, um, let's go ahead and get on with our uh, with the training today. We're talking about basically uh, what is in your crafty class. That oh, we didn't talk about your crafty class. <laughs> oh, bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I said at the very beginning for those of you that didn't that weren't with us yet, uh, Charity just released a crafty class today, um, and so it's a it's a really good one. I actually got to see it last night, which was really oh, fun. You stayed up. <laughs> so I did. Well, I actually watched half of it last night and the other half this morning very as smart. I was getting everything ready for the training. So. But it's really good, very informative, and oh cool. gosh, I'm pulling out my sugar today. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, but Charity is going to be uh, teaching this, or well, she has this crafty class out now about uh, isomalt, about sugar, and so she is going to tell us a little bit about um, the isomalt uh, medium and get us all ready so that we can uh, go and do some sugar work. So, yay. yay. All right, so to start off, um, we're going to ask you, what is isomalt? How is it different from sugar? And, you know, what, what are the benefits and things like that? So Great. All right. Well, isomalt is sugar. It is sucrose. It has just had a couple of enzymes changed in it. It's gone through a um, hydrogenated process. Um, I know uh, the word hydrogenated has this terrible... Um, terrible like feeling about it people are freaked out about it but when it comes to something other than fat it's fine <laughs> uh, <laughs> I small it's not a fat so um, anyway so it's uh, it is sugar but because it's been it's gone through this process this two-part process of being somewhat changed it does not attract moisture the way sugar does which is makes it fantastic for our purposes because we can then utilize it within pastry and on cakes and such and not have this sticky goo of a mess that sugar can turn into, real sugar. Um, it, uh, it makes it great for diabetics. Actually, it's used quite a bit in the diabetic industry. It has half the calories of sugar and has um, half the glycemic index of sugar. Can, so, can you just eat? I mean, because I know that a lot of people don't work with isomalt because they're, it's, it's, I, we've heard people say that it's not edible. So what's what's the story there? I mean, clearly well, people are using diabetic, it. Yeah, all the diabetics in the world <laughs> might, might uh, have something to say about that. <laughs> um, no, it's absolutely edible. And um, the thing is that um, similar to the substitute fats, that were out there um, that they made chips with and stuff, and they they tell you don't um, don't eat a lot of it. It's the same thing with isomalt. If you eat more than a couple ounces of it, which frankly that's actually kind of a lot, but if you yeah. eat more than a couple ounces of it, you can have some intestinal distress for um, a G-rated term. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want to get too ugly, um, but yeah. So you just want to be careful how much you eat of it. But um, when I'm eating a sugar glass, because I'm drinking out of it and showing how you can eat the glass and stuff, mm -hmm. absolutely you can eat it. You bet. Good. Well, that puts our minds at ease and, <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> um, it does not caramelize and brown the way sugar does, normal sugar does, because of that carbon molecule that's been, that's been changed in it. Um, so we can get it to 340, 360 degrees without it turning color. Um, as long as you use the proper kind of water and um, really clean tools because any kind of minerals or impurities that you get to that level of heat, those are going to start to turn color. So you have to keep those out of your medium as you're cooking it. But um, yeah, you can, keep it, you can keep it clear, which is wonderful because it's a super strong 
um, just like uh, in candy cooking principles, how you cook things to, you know, softball and hardball and hard crack stage kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a similar principle with, with isomalt. You want to cook it to hard crack and even higher. And um, then you have a really strong medium. And, but luckily you've kept it clear instead of, you know, at like 240 or something is when, um, or even lower is when sugar starts to turn brown on you. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you mentioned um, the right kind of water. What is, what is the right kind of water? You want to use distilled water because distilled water has had all the minerals taken out of it. It is strictly water. And mm -hmm. so you don't want to use even spring water or uh, de filtered water, any of that. Distilled water works the absolute best. And your utensils need to be clean. You need to use stainless steel. Make sure your pot is clean. And um, then in the class, it talks a lot about what type of heat you use, um, whether it's an induction burner, a gas burner, or electric burner, um, and the different things you need to do for all of those things. Um, but so depending on, but you know, you'll have to take a class, I mean, to get all that stuff, because that's a lot to go into here. Yeah, but, there's so much information on there. You're right. Yeah, I, it's, so you want to, but there, you know, there's different ways, and I cover it all. So that whatever your situation, hopefully, I've covered something for you. Yeah. Well, and if you have questions, that, the great thing about Crassy is you can go on and ask, you know. And, and that is, to, isn't that answer, cool? Right? I think that's so cool. <laughs> I know. Yep. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Um, this is another example of it not, you know, browning or caramelizing. So you can do cool stuff like this, you know, like these... Champagne edible glasses. glasses, yeah. So cool. And you do talk about these edible glasses, and you actually show how to do it in this crafty class. Correct, right? yes. Yep. Very fun. Isn't that a really fun, you know, cake separator? That's just really awesome. I'm so excited um, about sugar tear separators and all the different ways I'm coming up with creating them because it's just a, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different look for wedding cakes, so it's really fun. It is. That is super cool. All right. So now um, there is out there the pre-baked um, the one uh, isomal that you can purchase, and then you have like the little uh, granulated kind of isomal that's not pre-baked. So uh, what's the what's the difference, and how do you work between the two of them, and why would you use one over the other? Got it. Thanks for asking that question. Okay, so the pre-cooked, pre-colored isomal uh, that Cake Play sells and a couple other companies. Um, they sell them in the nibs so you just pour them into a Pyrex and melt them down in your microwave or pour them into a pot and melt them down and those are fantastic. You can have every color of the rainbow on hand and all the different packages. Very convenient and really excellent for a lot of things. What they're not excellent for is like um, the make your own molds bead molds, Marina's bead molds because those holes are so tiny that you have to get um, the isomalt into, the viscosity or the thinness or thickness of the liquid, that's what viscosity means for anybody that doesn't know, um, on pre-cooked, they have, they've cooked isomalt with no water. And so they have simply heated isomalt, which starts off, like you said, as a granulated white powder I tease that it looks like Tide minus the blue crystals, so you got to be careful. Uh -huh. <laughs> Don't accidentally use it as laundry detergent. Um, that would be a bit of a so, mess. <laughs> yeah, it would be a little bit sticky. Um, so that, uh, anyway, when you cook it yourself and you cook it with some water in it to start, even though, you know, through the cooking process, all that water steams off, but there is still a tiny amount of water left in it, which allows that ice malt to be thinner in viscosity when it's warm, when it's at like 295 degrees, which is what you want to pour beads at, so that it is thin enough to get in those tiny holes in those molds, so that it will create your gems, and you're not going to come up with like half half filled gems, which is really really frustrating. I mean, I've I've done a chandelier cake or two, and you have to have a lot of molds, and you better get each pour right on because the time it takes to get all those done and get them out and you better hope that every one of them is poured correctly because it takes way too much time otherwise. So yeah. <laughs> trying to take out the guesswork for you, 
don't use pre-cooked and pre-colored isomalt when you're trying to do those things or any other kind of like tiny mold. Little. Okay. It's fine for pulling, fine for blowing, uh, fine for creating a whole lot of things, but it's not quite perfect for everything. So. Okay. And do you personally use like the pre-made ever, or do you just use the isomalt? The um, you know, I. I cook my own a lot um, for the most part, but I do use um, cake play and um, I have all their stuff on hand all the time. And, you know, if, if I'm out of green per, per se, uh, but I have my green cake play on hand, I can melt it up really quick and throw something together. Um, so it's crazy convenient. It's really good on the convenience scale. So I do highly recommend it for that. And for people starting out, um, you know, cooking it might be a little scary. It might be a little, even after you watch the class and I show you everything about how to do it, you still might want to just start with ordering some cake play and um, starting off with, you know, the bare minimum of equipment and necessities and just get playing with it. Just get your hands on it because it's so much fun. Awesome. Well, good. Nice to know a little bit about the difference between the two because I know that a lot of people don't. Yeah. So, all right, and then to get started, you know, all those of us that really want to get into sugar, I know I have been, you know, dying to get my hands on all the sugar stuff. I went out and bought myself the light and the, the mat and the, you know, I have everything. It's all ready cool. to go. So, but how about you tell everybody what they will need to get started and um, things that, you know, just are mandatory or, you know, things that are convenient or different ways to get around the things that, you know, maybe they can't afford. Awesome. Okay. Well, I believe um, that you can start off with uh, working with sugar really inexpensive. Um, I know any of us that do cake, you understand, oh my goodness, all this junk I have to store, all these molds, all this these cake pans, all these colors and glitters and lusters, oh my goodness, it becomes a storing nightmare. I totally get that. Um, if I showed you around my studio, you'd be like, ah, um, <laughs> metro racks packed full of stuff. Um, anyway, so I think just with some um, a sill pack or the silicone baking mats and um, a Pyrex measure, which is a glass measure that's um, able to go in and out of the microwave and take heat, Mm -hmm. and um, some good uh, thick medical gloves. And um, there's, let's see if I can see from here. There's some good medical gloves that are the 12 inch high, 12 inch high up your wrist. So you wanna protect your wrist, you wanna, I, I, I have a safety guide in the Craftsy class about mm -hmm. um, protecting yourself. And I know a lot of people freak out about the heat, but um, you wouldn't reach into your 350 degree oven without a hot mitt. It's the same kind of thing. You know, you mm -hmm. use protection against heat. And um, there's some really nice thick blue medical gloves that you can double up, triple up if you need to. Um, I started off with just some thinner nitrile gloves when I was in culinary school and I did five layers at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's hot, you know, and after you work with it for a couple hours, your hands start getting kind of raw. So the more gloves to protect your hands, the better. But um, then I um, went to the really thick black sugar work gloves that are made for sugar work. You can get those from Chef Rubber, which is chefrubber.com, and go to their sugar work um, area on their website. They have little liners that are inside them. I call them my Point Dexter gloves because they look <laughs> kind of like your Point Dexter. And um, so those will protect you. Those are great. But um, if you don't want to put, you know, money into that, you can just get the medical gloves and layer them on. And um, just working in and out of a microwave, um, the, maybe the next higher level price point would be you can use uh, an electric pancake griddle and put a silk pad on top of that and let your already pulled sugar or your pre-cooked um, cake play stuff sit on that and warm and you know put it on the lowest setting so that it doesn't become like liquid but you can use that for heat underneath you can just get uh, what's pictured here in this slide you see the ceramic um, you don't want the plastic kind because that doesn't handle this this kind of heat good enough but the ceramic uh, uh, coupler with a cord on top you can just go to your hardware store and get that really easy put in a 250 watt uh, heat bulb and you can clamp that to the uh, what is it to the um, the handle of your 
cabinets in your kitchen and let it dangle down above your countertop, I would just make sure you have like a wood or uh, silicone cutting board underneath that to protect your countertop, especially if you have granite, marble, um, any kind of mm -hmm. acrylic countertop that doesn't do heat very well. So, you know, make sure you protect your kitchen. And um, so you can do that. Uh, there's little butane torches. You don't necessarily have to do the kitchen torch that's more expensive. Um, there is the argument between what's food safe and what's not. Uh, my opinion personally is that um, most people don't eat these things. If you are in a professional environment, then by all means make sure you, everything you have is NSF and everything you have is food grade and you know, make sure you comply with all the OSHA everything so that you don't mm -hmm. get in trouble. But if you're just starting to work with this stuff in your own kitchen or your own cake studio or whatever, um, you know, go about it as cheap as possible and then as you get into it more and more, you can invest more and more money as it becomes profitable to you. Um, you can get a little butane torch from Harbor Freight Tools for eight bucks and you know the butane's just a couple dollars that's easy you can jump to the pro propane torch which you get um from your hardware store with a propane tank um so you mean there's just and then you can go all the way what's pictured here um to the expensive sugar warming boxes that have the um, special food grade acrylic and um fireproof heat proof um special board that everything's made out of that's all food grade and you can get pretty expensive in your investment mm -hmm. if you want to. Um, and then you can get to my level where you teach this stuff and you have like five of these sugar boxes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go, oh my goodness. Yeah. Dollar signs. <laughs> exactly. You see how but, much all this adds up to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. But no, I mean, but it's worth it because then I get to be right there with people and help them side by side, get their hands on this stuff and start creating things. Um, but I'm excited about the Craftsy class because I can't be everywhere. I've got three kids mm -hmm. and I can only travel so much a year. And so the Craftsy uh, platform is really exciting to me because they can interact with me on the platform and ask me questions and, um, and they get to get a whole bunch of instruction that I usually give in a hands-on person-to-person class, but they get it, you know, in their time and on their schedule and they can, they own it forever. They get to go back and forth and, and jump around if they want to. And I think it's such a fantastic thing to get to more people than I can personally get to. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing I, you know, just watching your thing yesterday, one feature that I really like about Craftsy is their 30-second replay. You, you know, if you miss something, you're like, oh, what did she do? You just click on the button. It takes <laughs> back 30 seconds. And it'll actually keep replaying that same 30 seconds for you if you want. So. That's that cool. Really, really pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's Very awesome. Cool. Um, so yeah, there's also um, on the Craftsy thing there, you have a place where um, you have like a list of all the items that you use and where you mm -hmm. can purchase them. Mm -hmm. So if anybody really wants to get really into this and has, you know, that you want to know where Charity got everything and where you can get everything there she has you know links to everything that you can go and get stuff so which is wonderful yeah there's a the safety guide the supply guide and then the buying guide so all of those things and then there's also a whole tutorial you can print out if you want to about cooking it and so you can like take that with you if you don't want to take your computer with you into the kitchen but you can take that with you and kind of like do a check off as you're cooking it for the first time yourself. Perfect. Awesome. And the, okay, so here's another aspect of of sugar is the blowing the sugar. So yeah. does this take a lot of equipment? You know, what do you, what is involved with this? You know, um, I learned personally with the um, it looks like a blood pressure cuff bulb with a wooden tip or a copper tip on the end with a long tube. Um, mm -hmm. That's how I learned originally in culinary school, and it always seemed really awkward to me. It was kind of a struggle. It was a little tough. I mean, I got it down. I had to practice a lot, and then when I went and worked with my mentor, and Andre Renard, um, who's an amazing pastry chef uh, from France, he taught me how to use a PVC tube, a thin little PVC tube that's pennies 
at a hardware store, literally pennies. And and you know if if you need to chop off the end, big deal. I mean, it, instead of like <laughs> yeah, instead of like shredding the wood on this expensive you know sugar work tool. Um, if again, if you're in a professional environment and you have to have everything NSF and food safe, I know there's specific tubing out there you can use that's used for like water line um, for refrigerators and stuff like that. So just be careful what kind you get if you're in a professional environment. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I love it because you're blowing air with your mouth, but you have two hands to work with. So right here, I'm using both my hands to manipulate this ball and I'm controlling the air more with my with my mouth, which I have more control over than a bulb I'm pumping. Mm -hmm. And so it's way easier for students to pick up first time off. Um, every class I teach in this, the, the people as they get started blowing sugar, they cannot believe how fast they get the hang of it. I mean, it's because everybody thinks, oh my gosh, blowing sugar, that's so hard, that's so scary. And because it looks amazing. That's the thing. Yeah, exactly. And there's so many cool things you can do with it and create out of it. But it's so easy when you just use this tube and you blow. Um, I know there's um, the argument of, well, you're blowing moisture because you have breath. You're blowing moisture into, your, into your, your sugar. It's so minute. It doesn't matter. It's fine. And ice malt can handle a tiny bit of moisture. That's why it was created. I mean, it's... You know, it, it resists moisture. That's why it's isomalt and not sugar. Okay. All right. And this right here, we're going to talk a little bit about when you'll actually use isomalt. I know that a lot of people have this idea that, you know, isomalt is only used in sugar sculptures like this, you know. And when will you ever use that when you're a cake decorator? So we're going to have, we've got a whole bunch of examples that you've shared with us on you know, different ideas and things that you can do with isomalt. So, and, and uh, some of these ideas are really awesome. So, well, thank you. This is actually a little sugar sculpture that one of my students made after having only four hours of sugar instruction. So, he created this after having one four hour class of hands on sugar. And then the next class, the next four hours, I let them use all the techniques I taught them and they get to create their own under the sea sugar sculpture. And, and it's, um, I mean, I, I'm in San Diego, California. There's no market here for big sugar sculptures like you see on Food Network in the big sugar competitions, the World Pastry Forums and all that stuff. Um, in Vegas and maybe on cruise ships, the, the <coughs> two places I know of, that, that people actually make those. And, and all it is is art that happens to be edible because nobody, nobody even comes close to eating it. And uh -huh. they're, they're so gorgeous, and the, the people that do those are so fantastic. I have a lot of respect for them, but um, I can't sell that, and mm -hmm. I'm in the business of selling cakes. So my whole thing is let the, um, let the medium or, like, whatever you're, you're supposed to, whatever you need to be making, use the correct medium to actually make that particular piece. So, in other words, for gems... Duh, use sugar, right? Don't make gems uh -huh. out of fondant or gum paste and then try to make them look like gems. Use sugar because it's clear. Um, it looks like a gem. Um, you know, for water, pour isomalt over ice. Um, for, you know, there's so many different things. For glassware, obviously. For bottles, duh. Um, there's so many things that you can use isomalt for that are way better um, I tease James Rosell every time um, he and I get together that I still want to um, challenge him to a race in making flowers, me and sugar and him and gum paste, and he always laughs, he'll win every time <laughs> because it's so fast to make flowers out of sugar, um, actual isomalt, pulled sugar, rather than waiting forever for gum paste to dry. And um, it's a very different look, but... Um, Sugar flowers are, you know, ice malt pulled sugar flowers are just money. I mean, because they're so shiny and beautiful, and and um, and I I believe that sugar work more than any other medium creates the wow factor on cakes. There's nothing else that has that sheen, that has the beauty, that has the um, ability to create the things it creates. I mean, even gelatin bubbles don't look as fantastic as blown sugar bubbles. 
They come close. I'll give them that. They, they do, they come, do close. come close. They come yeah. close, but they also don't um, hold up as well as as a sugar as a blown sugar ball. So like this is um, this is a an under the sea wedding cake and it has blown sugar bubbles all over it. And I mean, it's just it, it creates just a really stunning look. It's really fantastic. I love this. I love the look of it. It's just so fun. This has bubble sugar on top too, which has, it's a plate of sugar that has little bubbles all in it that I also um, talk about in the, at the end of the Craftsy class of a whole bunch of other techniques to, that can be used and, and done with sugar that we will hopefully do in a second level um, isomalt class um, after we see how this Craftsy class does and how people receive this one. That would be really awesome. Yeah. You always like more, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one has pressed sugar flowers, and I talk about how to do that too with um, press molds from your companies like New York Cake and uh, Chef Rubber. And um, as you make your own molds, doesn't do press molds. But um, you know, there's quite a few people out there that do the press molds, which is the two part molds. So you put a piece of sugar in between the molds and press it. And then when it's still warm, you can manipulate it more and and create sugar flowers like this. That's I I watched that and I was like, oh, that's so easy looking. Oh my yeah, god! It's very you look at it, very it looks simple. So, it looks so complex, but I watched it last night and I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so easy. I could so I know. Know. <laughs> see the fun thing actually about the the crafty classes. I'm hoping at least, and you all have to tell me after you watch it and give me some feedback. But I'm hoping it really demystifies the medium for you because yeah. it has such a stigma of being this scary, hot thing. Granted, it is hot, but um, yes. <laughs> it's not scary. It's not scary at all. Well, and I like how you said that, you know, as far as uh, people are so careful about not burning themselves, and you said that you end up cutting yourself with the sugar more than you do burning yourself. Absolutely. You know, just because it's sharp, you know, yes. so. It's, yeah, when it breaks, it's, it's as sharp as glass, and I have literally been cut more than burnt by it. All right. So if you're careful, you know, it's yeah. good. And I love and the, is the, is the grass on that, is that sugar too? Is that pulled sugar? Um, the grass that's on the actual cake is, um, that's fondant. Oh, is that fondant? That's okay. fondant that's been, um, that's been uh, cut into shreds. But what's really funny, this was actually a wedding in Alaska, and, um, and they were putting in new sod at the wedding location, and I was there, you know, checking out the location the day before the wedding, and so I grabbed a piece of sod from the guys that was left over, <laughs> and I put it under the cake table really quick so I could use it as part of the cake display, because I thought, this is going to look so cool under the cake. So that's literally a piece of sod that, nice. then, has, that then has upside down um, wine glasses that have oh, oranges yeah. and limes inside, and then it's on a plate glass cake board, and then it has, um, you know, cookie and graham cracker crumb dirt, because they wanted this organic look, but still mm -hmm. kind of geometric, you know, yeah. kind of a hybrid look. But anyway, Very so, cool. yeah, so I, mean, I I also teach classes in cake boards and cake displays, and this is a perfect example. Um, you know, people that put their cakes on a $3 bakery board, that's, it's a continuation of your art, and you need to make it so. And I like mm -hmm. to say, would you put the statue of David on a wood pallet? No, you would not. <laughs> not. Exactly. <laughs> Michelangelo would like turn over in his grave. So, no foil. Yeah, no so foil. do it to your art. Make sure your art is displayed appropriately because it is art and all the time and, and effort you've put into it, don't just slap it on something ugly. I could not okay, there's agree my more. public service announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I could not agree with you more. <laughs> All right, this one's really awesome. This was fun. This is this was done for a wedding company that is a gothic Halloween themed wedding company that the guy um, who played Eddie Munster in the Munsters has created here in California, and um, so there is gelatin blood coming out of the black lace. Um, the the wrought iron fencing around the bottom layer is sugar, and um, the the spiders are all sugar. I did some marbled sugar in the medallion um, with it's then painted with cocoa butter. And then it's a black pulled sugar flower with then a, um, a gum paste skull. And then, of course, it's tons and tons of airbrushing and all sorts of fun stuff there. So, but yeah, this That's was a so fun, cool. this is a fun cake. 
That's really cool. And I love how all of the mediums come together and work so well. I mean, you've got your fondant, you've got your gum paste, you've got your sugar work. You know, gelatin you, even on this one because there's gelatin um, gelatin spider webs and the gelatin mm -hmm. blood that's pouring out of the pouring out of the that second tier there um, out of the lace holes uh -huh. it's like the cake is oozing blood that's so cool <laughs> so gross <laughs> but what it does cool <laughs> and wouldn't that be just a cool Halloween wedding you know because I, I know a lot of people do Halloween weddings you know it's, yeah Halloween the thing. people are really into it and the zombie thing and whatnot it's so it's huge right now <laughs> yeah it is so I'm like okay <laughs> I can do that <laughs> cool very cool so again right. let the let the medium dictate you know what it can be used for mm-hmm yeah. So here we've got a lot. And yes. the glass is uh -huh. sugar. As it should be. <laughs> as it should be. And, you know, it makes it look so realistic. I know that a lot of people would just leave it as, you know, the face of the watch with nothing over it. But you throw that piece of ice malt on it. Wow. It just, you know. Makes it just takes it to difference. another level, right? Yeah. It takes it to a whole nother level. And people looked at that watch and they thought, why did she put a real Rolex in there? I mean, but yeah, that's one of the biggest compliments I get besides, hey, your cakes taste amazing is, oh my gosh, I thought that was the real thing. So, and I'm sure many of you out there feel the same way that that's like one of the best compliments we can get is, wow, I thought that was the real deal. It absolutely <laughs> I is. I think it was edible. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is. And so, yeah, <clears throat> see, we're trying to convince you guys all that isomalt is really important as a cake decorator. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. Now, this was the cake that I did for the Nisi Nash Wedding Bash. It's a chandelier cake. All those beads, um, those strings of beads were all isomalt. The gems on it are all isomalt. And then that flower is about a 16-inch round diameter pulled sugar flower. Wow, that's was massive. Big. <laughs> yes. That, that's well, heavy, isn't it? How did you get it to stay in there? Well, I had um, each, I had the core of the flower built around a dowel. It was all, mm -hmm. you know, melted onto a dowel. And then each individual petal that when, then was around there was each on its own individual wooden, wooden stick, apple sticks. Oh, and okay. so I, I had the core kind of bud, if you will, in the middle that stuck on that wasn't too heavy and then each individual petal went on separate so that they each had their own thing into a posy pick you know so it had some strength going into the cake um, mm -hmm. yeah so that, I mean again there's physics involved in a lot of cake as we know and I, yeah. I don't know about anybody else I wish I'd paid better attention in math class <laughs> I never yeah. thought I'd have to use it the way I'm using it but um, yeah in physics I did pay attention in chemistry I did um, Thank goodness. That's mm. <laughs> see, I, I I learn I listen more in math than I did in chemistry, so <laughs> <laughs> guess I'm in trouble. <laughs> like, how do you do pi? Oh yeah, you have to like figure that and the diameter and oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I love the I love the the glass and the the beads inside the glass. That's really cool. Yeah, that was a fun one. And then there's lights all in there and stuff, so. Very it just cool. makes it fun. It makes it a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Well, and that that uh, sugar flower, it you know, from a, from the way I see it, I don't know if it would look like that way, you know, up close, but it reminds me of the um, like the mesh material gathered fabric type of flowers. Oh yeah. So very. Yeah. Well, Nisi Nash, um, she her signature is this huge flower always in her hair. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so I thought, well, I'm going to put that somehow into this wedding cake of hers just as a, like, you know, a, mm -hmm. throw, to, a throw to her signature. Uh-huh, her so, huge flower. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's she cool. Loved she loved <laughs> Very it. Very so, clever. Like, <laughs> now, this is neon sugar. This is a technique I developed. Um, because the lights are so bright on it, you can't really see it, but it actually does glow. Oh, cool. um, All those letters do glow. I, um, I put in uh, Chef Rubber's glow... Uh, sparkle, the glow-in-the-dark uh, glitter, plus some glow powder, and um, then I took warm pulled sugar and took the glow bracelet sticks that you buy for a buck for your kids. <laughs> I took the glow bracelet sticks and um, wrapped sugar around them and rolled it and um, 
and those, you know, the, the sticks were already cracked. So they were glowing within the sugar, which also had glow stuff in it. So it looked like a neon sign. Because you know how a neon Whoa. sign has the tube inside plus the stuff on the outside. Well, you can't uh -huh. really, I tried, you can't really create that kind of a, a tube and the fluorescent um, air effect that's all that goofy stuff with the actual light. So this was, this is what I came up with instead to give the look of a neon sign and still make it edible. <laughs> that is really cool. I like that. Yeah, it was fun. It was, I was excited when I... When I came up with that idea, <laughs> you know those epiphanies, you're like, wow, cool. We might have to have you do a special thing on just that. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Ewald Noter, who is probably the godfather of all things sugar, would be like, what the heck uh, is she doing? But I'm, I'm known for the weird stuff I like to create out of sugar. Again, I, you know, I can't sell those big sugar sculptures as much as I would love to. This is the stuff I can sell. Exactly. Is the stuff that's, exactly. that's supposed to look at like it's out of glass and whatnot. I can make it out of sugar. Mm -hmm. so. And hello, steampunk. I mean, who doesn't want Yeah. Look at that. That's so cool. I love well, it. Well, these, there's a gal that actually wore this and put the goggles on her face. Oh, um, really? Yes. And she drove at the Kansas City Cake Fest, drove the, um, the biggest and fastest edible car, and they got it in the Guinness Book of World Records. So we created Ooh. for her a helmet and glasses out of also edible material. It's all modeling <laughs> chocolate and then the sugar for the goggles. And she wore it and got the gold, uh, the what are they, not gold medal, the uh, world record. That is awesome. I yeah, love it's that. Pretty fun. <laughs> Very cool. I I love the steampunk look to it. Too. Uh, yeah, totally. That's awesome. All right, and this is something you've come up with too. That I just oh, I love this. Isn't that fun? Oh my goodness. This is um, a marvelous mold. It's the Karen mold. And um, the way uh, the owner of that company, Dominic, has created his molds is that they're all pi squared. So three of his molds will go around a six inch round, eight, uh, four of them will go around an eight, five around a ten, etc. So this is um, four molds around an eight inch and um, that, I, that I formed and then um, fuse them together because it's sugar on sugar just by heat and then it's a sugar tear separator with a light inside and you know this whole button lace cake thing it it, it worked really really beautiful really cool look awesome. to it awesome that is so pretty I wish we could talk more about it because but we gotta move on I know we gotta wrap up this is so cool I love but, the idea of this this was an R&D project that we did for Chef Rubber um, that's molecular gastronomy inside it's a fully functioning, totally edible lava lamp. So it's sugar is the glass, chocolate is the cap and the base. Um, I guess technically the only thing that's not edible is the light bulb, but um, you don't see that. <laughs> that's so, and it actually <laughs> moves and works? It moves and works. That is um, the caviar so cool. kit. That's the caviar kit um, stuff from Chef Rubber. Yep. Wow. That's amazing. I love it was that. Fun. That was a fun <laughs> thing. To, it was hard, but that was a fun thing to do. Yeah. This and is like... This is Dale Chihuly style glasswork that's kind of art glass on the top. Um, it matched uh, for a trade show the gal who's right next to it on the mannequin that has an all plastic wear wedding dress. Oh, and yeah. so I've got the tear separators there as a chandelier's, you know, reverse cake, and then the Dale Chihuly style glasswork on top, and then it's all disco, edible disco dust um, around the sides of the cake. Very modern. I like that. Very Vegas. It was yes, in Vegas. It is, so. <laughs> it is very Vegas. <laughs> go Vegas. Um, this is a watch cake that has a 16-inch round piece of uh, isomalt glass on it that is the crystal. Um, this couple saw my second Ultimate Cake Off where I did a whole bunch of sugar work on that cake, and they asked me when they were in helping to you know design this watch because they'd met at a watch store and they both worked for Turno watches. They oh, cool. asked if I could, if they came up with the idea. They asked if I could make the crystal out of sugar and I went, Oh my goodness. Awesome. <laughs> Let me get back to you on that one. And so I figured out a way to make a, make a mold and pour it perfectly clear and bubbleless and came out awesome. That is so cool. I love that. 
Isn't that so fun? Cool. And just a few more, just to you know, throw in grand finale, yep. I guess. <laughs> this is this is from the second ultimate kickoff. Those are pulled sugar magnolias, um, poured sugar, and um, and pulled sugar uh, embellishments on the top there uh, for the the glass slipper, which is all sugar, and then the sugar glassware and the sugar Dom Perignon bottle. Very awesome. So cool. See all the cool stuff you can do with sugar. I know, it's so cool. <laughs> Such fun stuff. Awesome. And really fast, I know we're running out of time and we want to get just a couple of questions in. I'm so sorry that we're, yeah. <laughs> we, we have so much cool sugar stuff to show you guys. So um, really fast, this is the, the recipe that Charity is going to share with us today. Um, for those of you that really want this recipe, I will be putting it up on our Cake Food blog later on today, so make sure you go and get this. It is gluten-free, so Yay. we can't, can't beat, you know, chocolate cookies that are gluten-free, so. And they are chocolatey. If you're a chocoholic, they are for you. Yeah, and you said that you actually make these with um, ostrich eggs so that... Correct. I do. So that the egg allergy is not an issue. Yep, I make them with um, ostrich egg white. Oh, ostrich. Okay, egg white. And so you just substitute the egg whites with you know the amount that it would take to make. Yep. Measure okay. it out, you know, uh, liquid to liquid, and use ostrich instead of chicken because it works just the same, but it doesn't have any of the allergens. So cool. So anybody that yeah. is trying to do, you know, allergy, you know, free cooking. Ostrich eggs. I, I had no idea. I had no idea. Who knew? <laughs> oh, and you're okay. So I thought this was just really cool, and I have to throw this in there. Charity is going to be doing a news segment. When when is that going to be? Tomorrow, um, it's going to be the fr no no no. It's going to be the Friday <laughs> before Easter. It's for oh, Easter and Easter. about eggs. So I'm doing a cooking segment on our um, our channel six news here in San Diego, and. Um, they're trying to get the ostrich farmer I work with to bring an ostrich in studio. They want the actual bird there. I would have watched that uh, segment. <laughs> so I know. Then they. Well, I'll post it on my website, which is chefcharity.com. Um, awesome. After it airs, I'm. I always post the um, the different news segments I and cooking segments I do. So you can go on there and see a bunch of the other ones I've done, um, and the icing smiles cakes I've done too. Um, so anyway, so they want me to open a, open an ostrich egg and show how you open it and how you use it and how you can create um, and make things with ostrich egg. And I will probably be doing these cookies, actually, because they're made with just the egg white. So I show how you separate the white and the yolk. And um, because these are also gluten-free, this is a really you know awesome one to do for Easter. It's chocolate and it's gluten-free, and then you can make it egg-free. So I will probably be doing these cookies. But it's the yeah. Friday before Easter, so... Awesome. So watch for her link. I, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, right. actually. <laughs> uh, sounds like fun. Okay, so um, questions. Uh, we, we have several. For those of you that um, haven't asked any questions, you can go ahead and ask your questions. I don't know if we'll get to all of them. Um, we do have quite a few so far. If you're wanting to ask a question and don't know how, there's an ask a question box down at the bottom. Uh, we'll go through as many as we can, and I hope you guys don't mind that we're going over a few minutes. Um, okay, so the first one is by Suzanne Osman. She asks a couple of questions. First, how quickly does ice melt cool down and set up? And second, which is better to work with um, a flame heat or an electric heat source? Oh, good questions. Um, okay, so how fast ice malt cools, unfortunately, is kind of a, a lame answer I'm going to give you, but it uh, depends on how cool the room is that you're working in, how thick the ice malt is, but it um, it cools fairly quickly. I mean, com and compared to, like, drying of any other medium, including chocolate, um, when chocolate has to set up, uh, it, it's pretty fast. It's pretty quick. Good. When you're in a hurry, it's totally the thing to go to. Yeah, seriously. Well, I know a lot of people that actually adhere stuff with sugar. Because yeah. It, it, you know, it makes fast. great glue for mm -hmm. sure. And then um, the best heat source really is an induction burner. Um, I do go over that in the Craftsy class. Um, a, a gas flame, you have to do a, a, another step. It works just fine. But um, if you have an induction burner, I'd use it. Okay. 
Great. All right. Um, so she says, how do you... <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> I want to know, too. Oh, great. Uh, <laughs> we have Debbie Beasley asks, how do you stay so thin working with all these sweets? <laughs> oh, my heavens. Um, I am a taster by nature, not an eater. That and I... Um, I eat, I graze throughout the day, I run, I have three kids I have to keep up with, plus a business. I don't sleep much, which actually is supposed to make you gain weight. But um, yeah, I just, I go, 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 go. The joke, the running joke of my friends is, um, you know, the movie Up and uh -huh. uh, and how the dog goes, squirrel, that's me. <laughs> um, and, and, and it's also a joke, like, can you imagine charity on caffeine? Because I don't eat any, I don't eat or drink any caffeine. And um, they can't imagine me on caffeine because I'm such a spaz already. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, we have, um, let's see, Claire North asks, if you melt ice to melt in the microwave, in what time increments do you heat, uh, like, say, 30 seconds and 50 seconds? How, how do you melt it correctly is what I'm trying to ask. Good question. When it is cold and hard, like if you pour a bag of ice or uh, cake play nibs into a, into a Pyrex, I would start off with like three to four minutes because if you go in 30 second increments, you'll be there all day. It's not like chocolate that you have to be kind of careful with. Um, once it starts getting melted, you want to move it around a little bit. Um, I prefer table knives because then I can scrape it off just fine on the side. I show that in the, in the Craftsy Class too. I like that better than a spoon because then in the divot of a spoon, you get stuck, you know, cold ice malt and that's kind of uh, counterproductive. Mm -hmm. So um, then after that, you can go in like minute increments and just kind of keep an eye on it. Once it starts bubbling two-thirds of the way down, you know you're right at about 310 degrees. Okay. What if, what if you're using, you know, the pre-cooked? You don't want to – do you want to actually cook it that long, or would it be bad to cook it that long if you had the pre-cooked? Uh, no, you want to start off with a good three minutes. I know it oh, says okay. otherwise on the package, um, but I start off with three minutes. Um, you know, if your microwave is particularly hot, maybe try two. But as you get to working with it, you'll get a better feel with your own microwave and whatnot. How, you know, how fast you can get it melted. You just don't want to be there forever. I'm impatient too. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Uh... That's an interesting question. Bunny Roberts asks, can you add the distilled water to the cake play and cook it? Probably maybe uh, to change the viscosity that you were talking that's, about. That's a good question. Um, you know, the pro I've been explained kind of the process that they go through to make that stuff, um, and I honestly wouldn't do it. Okay. I mean, you if you want to try it, um, go for it, but I really wouldn't do it. To me, it's so much easier just to cook my own and and color it um, or keep it clear and again if you have a mistake and it browns a little bit like if you had some impurities or you goofed and didn't use distilled water just color it I mean it's not like it's destroyed just color it and there's almost no waste in isomal either because if it breaks if it whatever just melt it back down and start over I mean, it's no big deal Awesome. Okay. Um, and this will have to be our last question. I'm sorry for those of you that didn't get your questions answered. Um, let's see. We have Megan asks, how long can you keep the isomal on a cake before it discolors or changes by the humidity? Um, for putting it on a cake, um, one, you don't want to put it on the cake when you're going to be putting it in the refrigerator. You want to place your sugar pieces on the cake when after it's sitting at the delivery site. Um, don't do it before and always make extra just in case of breakage um, again you can melt it down afterwards and, and redo it no big deal um, there's some really great stuff that Chef Rubber sells called food lacquer and um, after you've uh, lacquered your pieces like that they can stay they can stay good almost indefinitely because mm -hmm. you've protected them from any humidity especially like you folks in Florida Texas parts of Texas that kind of stuff definitely use your food lacquer um, but don't lacquer the part that you're going to want to attach to a cake if you're going to melt sugar to attach it. If you're mm -hmm. going to use another, you know, like you use gel paste, no problem. But if you want to use the actual melted sugar, you're not going to really be able to melt through that food lacquer very well. So, But I cover yeah. all that in the class, too, in more I was in just going to say that there's a lot of really good information on the lacquer and, and adhering and melting and all that kind of stuff on, on the crafty thing. So. Yeah. 
Very good information. Okay, thank you so much for the all the good information. Gosh, we've learned a lot. <laughs> I'm okay. so glad you had me on. Thank you so much. <laughs> I know. Okay, so just really fast, here are some of the classes that Charity is going to be doing um, in the next little bit. They're all in California, San Diego area, right? Yep, for now, so yes. For now, all these ones are. So um, watch for those if you're going to be in the area. Um, if you if you want more information on her classes and um, want to keep up with Chef Charity, uh, you can go to her website chefcharity.com and your actual professional cake decorating you know website that you sell cakes through is the eatdessertfirst.com. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. Awesome. So if you want to order a cake from Charity, that's where you'll go. <laughs> Thanks. So, and then also the Craftsy class. Make sure that you uh, go and check out the Craftsy class. It, it, yes. it really is. I mean, I, I'm not just saying this because, you know, I, I'm saying it because I watched it and I really <laughs> do strongly believe that it's it's really good information. So Cool. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it and I'm going to go home and start making some sugar stuff. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, everybody that came and listened. And yes, thank you. Make sure you go and and get Charity's uh, Craftsy video and and um, and you know learn all that you can about sugar. We we as sugar artists, you know, we're always looking for something new and great. And sugar is such a wonderful medium for so many things. Like she just, you know, like we've just shown you. So it's. Go ahead and and try it out, and don't be don't be scared. <laughs> so, and thank you so much, Charity, for coming on. We're so glad to have you on. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. I really enjoy the 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 opportunity to be able to spread the word more about sugar. So, thank you. Awesome. All right, and I guess that that concludes it for us. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Okay, you too. Bye.